Here's another example of conditional probability or as we call and probability when you have multiple events. So if you want to pause the video so you have time to kind of read and soak in the question, um, feel free to do so. So we have a couple measures here. Now one, don't be fooled. Uh, make sure you're reading everything carefully. We're all conditioned nowadays to skim, but you've got to read. Um, we can see that 65% it jumps out at us, but down here we have another percentage. It's just hiding in the phrase one out of four. So one out of, of every, 65% are female. Of those, that's an important phrase, one out of every four works in the health field. So they're only talking about the females. One out of every four is the fraction one-fourth, which is 25%. So they gave us two percentages there, really. They just hid the second one. So that's our problem. We have a couple probabilities here. Find the probability that a randomly selected person from that jury pool is female. So female and there's our and probability, works in the health field, okay? So we know how to do and probabilities. We need to get the probability of each event and we multiply them together. So in this case, the probability was given to us as a percent and not a fraction. So we're gonna use that here. It's just when we calculate with percentages, we have to change it to a decimal. So the probability of somebody being female is 0.65. Now technically, when you do what's called and probability, it's really the probability of the first one, so I'm going to put F for, for well, or female, times the probability of the second one, second one, given that the first one has happened. So this is our symbol for a given statement. See that little line in between two things? Uh, and that's what we have here. It's what we had in the cards, too. Remember in the without replacement ones, our second fraction, it was actually a given situation. Given we left a king out of the deck. Now our second fraction is different. Well, given that we selected a female, the probability that they work in the health field, that's one out of every four, which is 0.25. And we multiply those two together. So in your calculators, you got 0.65 times 0.25. And the probability of that occurring is 0.1625. That's the probability that you randomly select somebody who's a female that works in the health field. That's important if you're a lawyer um, and it's a case that involves um, anything related to health. Okay, that was a silly comment. But anyway, that's how they use, they really do use probability and statistics like this. Law, the law degree is filled with it. Find the probability that one selected, someone selected is female and does not work in the health field. So we have an and probability, which means I need two probabilities that I'm going to multiply together. It's female and not health field. I know the probability of getting a female that's 0.65. I know when I am and situation, I multiply. Not being in the health field, that's when I've got to use the rule of complements here. So if you'll remember the rule of complements is one minus the probability that you're talking about. So if I want not health field, it would be one minus, minus the probability of being in the health field. That's 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 is my second probability. Multiply those two together and you get 0.4875. So when you have multiple events, and I might have had, um, well, anyway, that's just one example there. All right, let's look at another kind of, um, just our last sort of multiplication property probability. So what I have here is any, uh, something your app on your phone might tell you for the next three days, a weather forecast. So I've got the chance of rain each day. So notice Saturday, July 19th, chance of rain of 80%, then 50%, then 30%. And my question is, based on that forecast, what's the probability it will rain all three days? So you might look at that and say, oh man, it's gonna rain every day for the next three days. But let's look at the probability. So now we have three events. We're talking about three different days. I like to set up my little lines here. Um, and I want the probability that it rains on day one and rains on day two and rains on day three. And I know the probability of each and the probability doesn't change based on what happened the day before. 
So the probability that it rains on Saturday is 80%, so that's 0 0.80. Probability of rain on the second day is 50%, 0 0.5, and then 0 0.30 for the last one. But the probability that it rains every single day, all three days, I have to multiply those three together. And that will give me the probability that it's going to rain every single day for the next three days. And that's only a 12% chance. Isn't that shocking? Like, we all look at the forecast and we say, oh, man, it's going to rain every single day. But based on that weather forecast, there's only a 12% chance that it will rain every single day. Just as a follow-up, I kind of like this question. I won't type it out there. You'll just have to hear it. But um, And I'll write it in symbols. How about that? What's the probability of there being no rain for that three days? that it will not rain Saturday or Sunday or Monday. So you might be thinking, oh, that's rule of complement, and I just do 1 minus 0.12, but you can't do that, and here's why. If I were to do 1 minus 0.12, that's the complement of rain all three days. Well, there's a lot of things that are, can happen between rain all three days, there's rain day one, rain day two, and not rain, right? It might rain on one of the days and not on two of them. Or it might rain on two of the days, but then not rain on the third. So these are not our only two options. It's not either rain on all three or no rain on all three. There's, you might have, again, rain on some days, not on others. So that's why these two are not complements, and I cannot just do one minus 0.12 in order to get the answer to my second question. For two things to be complement, they have to be the only two options available. So how are we gonna solve my problem? Well, we're gonna solve it the same way we solved the first. I just wanna erase some of this stuff here. We're gonna solve it the same way we solved the first one. We're gonna get our three fractions. Let's get a brighter color here. And we're going to multiply our probabilities together. Probability that it does not rain on Saturday. Well, I'm going to use the rule of complements for that. The complement of 80% is 20%. Together, that makes up 100%. So there's 20% chance that it will not rain on Saturday. There's a 50% chance that it will not rain Sunday. And there's a 70% chance that it will not rain on Monday. So you're doing 100% minus each of these. So I'm going to, the probability that it won't rain on any of those days, 0 0.2 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.7, there's only a 7% chance of that. So it's not great, but it is possible. So that's just another twist on that um, same problem. The last example with... Um, this is we're going to deal more with conditional probability and and probability is if the data is given to you in a table. So uh, imagine that what this is is data on um, a, a summer's worth of speeding stops for a particular police department. So they've stopped a lot of people for speeding. Um, if you are a police officer listening to this, don't be offended. I don't know if this is a lot or a little. I don't know. But so. Uh, so we're looking at the difference between what happens when teens get pulled over and then just other drivers get pulled over. So those are our two categories here. And they either get a warning or they get a ticket and then the numbers fall out like that. And we wanna look at different probabilities. So maybe this is over the course of a summer, uh, all the traffic stops for that police department for speeding and this is how the table went out. So first thing I wanna look at is just some basic probability um, and that is this is sort of like empirical. If I was to randomly select one person that got stopped for speeding, what's the probability that, that I select somebody who got a warning? Well, we're going to make our fraction. We want the total number of options in that folder. There are 91 total people to choose from. 46 of those had warnings. So that's our fraction there, 46 divided by 91, and that gives us... 0.5, if we do, let's just do two decimal places. I get 505, so that rounds to 0.51. Now let's look at an and situation. What's the probability I select somebody who got a warning and is a teen? 
Or another way to put it, I could just say a teen who got a warning. So that would be trickier because it wouldn't have the word and in it. So I don't multiply here. When your data is given to you in a chart, there's no need for you to multiply. And the reason is because those people that you're talking about, the teens who got a warning, I can look and see exactly how many there are. I don't need to multiply two fractions to find out that there are 12 of them. So I can go straight to my fraction. I have 12 out of 91 people who are in both the warning and teen category. And that's 0.13. So when you have an and probability, but your data is in a chart, you don't have to multiply. Let me show you why that's true. If you wanted to multiply the two together, you have to be very careful. This is a good exercise to do. So you might say, why can't I just do the probability of those that got a warning times the probability of selecting a teen? The reason is the second fraction always depends on what happened the first time. It's what's called a given statement. So the probability of getting a warning we just said was 46 out of 91. I have to now decide, okay, now the second one depends on what happened on the first. So it's a given statement. So given that that person received a warning, what's the probability they're a teen? So now I'm, this is tricky. I need you to kind of, you might have to replay this a couple times. If I have given that the person is warning, I'm only looking at those people. That's what's given to me, those people right there. So now the probability of somebody being a teen, I have 12 of those out of a total of 46. I only use what's in that warning column because that's what's given to me in the first um, event, I guess. So that's my total. And as you notice, if I multiply here, those 46s will cancel out and I get my original fraction. So you can get the same, the, the correct answer by multiplying, but it's a lot trickier. You have to use that concept of given for your second fraction because it is conditional. It's just a lot easier to find the ones that's in both warning and teen category and go from there. Um, so let's do one that's just a straight up given statement. Uh, well, I marked my thing. Let's see if I can erase without causing too many problems. I'm going to do just a given statement. I've done an and probability. Okay, it's not letting me erase any further than that. I've done an and probability. We did a plain old probability. Now let's let's look at this. What's the probability that I select somebody who received a ticket given that they were not a teen? So this is important. I need you to soak this in. And this is a tricky concept for people. And I, I'll be honest with you, I've not understood why. It might just be not um, really letting your brain soak in. A given statement. It's important that you recognize what's given. I have the word given here, and I have two indicators, ticket and not teen. The, what is given to me is that the person is not a teen. That's what it said, given, not teen. You look at whatever's given to you, and those are the ones you concentrate on. Given not a teen, that means they gave you that you were in this other category. So circle, in your mind at least, what they gave you. Now you only use those numbers. You only use what's given to you. So now the probability that I select somebody who received a ticket, well, there's 18 ticket holders out of. 52 total possible people. Your bottom number is always your total. And so 18 divided by 52 is my new probability for that one. So 0.35 if I round to two decimal places. So be very careful there with your, with your given statement. Always check to make sure you're looking at what's given to you. Circle it either physically or in your mind, and those are the only numbers you should use.